My name is Kirsten Walnuts, and I'm the managing librarian at Sage Library. I recognize a lot of faces here today. Um, welcome to today's Book for Lunch. It is the last presentation for the fall session, if you can believe that. Um, so thank you so much for coming. We have a wonderful crowd, and just we thank you again for, um, for your continued support of this program. Um, the spring session, looking ahead, will run April 13th through May 18th. So look into the um, newsletter that we have, either email or inside the branches for the upcoming authors and reviewers that we'll have for that. And if you don't already subscribe to that newsletter, stop at any of the desks. They can get you signed up for that to have it sent by email. Um, or else you can go on our website to see those as well. And we should have the November, December one coming out pretty pretty quickly here since that is right around the corner. Um, one of the upcoming programs that we have at SAGE is next Thursday, November the 2nd at 6 p.m. Preserving Food for Gifts. It's presented by the MSU Extension. Um, Lisa Triber will be doing that. She is a food safety educator there. So feel free to register for that at any of the desks and it should be um, very informative. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our author today, Mr. John Cuthbertson. He lives in Saginaw with his wife, Margaret, here as well. He is a retired educator and former coach. Um, he has written a few books, including Coming to Scratch or Down for the Count, Memories of Boxers Who Gave Us Another Chapter of Sportsmanship in the Fine um, Arts of Fisticuffs. And today he will be discussing a book that took three years to write and bring to print. And the book is titled The Mighty Rifle River, The Headwaters of Aranac County and Surrounding Areas of Northern Michigan. Memories of Lumbering Camp, Woodlands, Personalities, and River Drives. So please help me in welcoming Mr. John Cuthbertson. Well, thanks to Renee Foley for her part, and of course she's got group of people that are involved in putting this thing together. Thank you all for coming. I hope I don't disappoint anybody. Right, Mr. Mizo? <laughs> I got his name. <laughs> he can't leave early, no. Well, anyway, uh, thanks very much. We, uh, we've got some things to share with you. You may know something about the mighty Rifle River, but I have an idea that because you're still alive, you don't know well, everything about it. But, uh, <laughs> and uh, I've invited some people here today because uh, the book is still alive. There's some that have passed away, but the kids are still around and so forth. Ted, uh, would you kind of raise your hand a little bit? Uh, Ted and his dear wife, Marlene, I hope I got that right. Didn't I? <laughs> yeah. And uh, a very, a very important part of this book. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes you get a lead. You never throw a lead away when you're uh, writing. Three years. Margaret probably could have walked out on me. Um, well, like the other book took me five years, and I said, well, I'm not interested anymore in writing the books. But you know, there's always some little thing comes along and kind of torments you. You got to do it. But uh, anyway, uh, there are certain people that have helped, and I've appreciated it. Uh, Brenda Matt. Matt Brenda Matt and, and uh, uh, Joni, uh, Joni, Joni, Joni. <laughs> oh, gee, I'm so sorry, sorry Joni. Uh, Gula. Gula. I got it straight. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, listen, uh, these ladies are from uh, Standish, Aranette County. And they've been involved in so many things. Uh, you know, the, the courthouse there at Homer that's just been painted and the new windows have been put in. And, you know, the, those things just don't happen. They're not an accident. There's people involved in it. And the secret is to get a lot of people working and with the idea that nobody is going to be the boss except you're trying to organize it. That's pretty close. That, that's pretty close, yeah. And uh, always good to me. Uh, sometimes I say, why are they so good to me, you know? But, um, oh, and then uh, Pat Galvis. Pat, would you move your, all right. Pat Galvis, see these people are, have been part of this book. Pat Galvis, his grandpa was George Mahoney. Good Irish boy. 
<laughs> and uh, George Mahoney and my grandfather were the best of friends. And I'll tell you some stories about this. Uh, you, you say, wow. But uh, one of his favorite expressions is, very much so. How are you doing today? Oh, very much so. You know so? Oh, very much so. And see, I remember that. And I, and I talked to, to Pat about this, and we talked, and I said, maybe we're some relation. Who knows? Um, but uh, those are the things about it. And lumbering is a big business. It was a tough business, OK? The, uh, the river, it was a, a highway. And it starts up there, some parts of West Branch. You hear West Branch? That was the West Branch of the, 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 the uh, Rifle River. Did you know that? Uh, OK. And uh, they dammed all these little rivers up and, 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 and so forth to build the, the water up so that when they did run the water out with a, a, a log uh, drive, uh, they had to dam it up again because they got more logs and they opened up these fresheners, they called them, and then the water would pour into the, into the, the main river again, bring it up, boom. Go up. Today they couldn't do this because you would flood a bunch of people's property, but back then. And so uh, this is kind of where we go from, uh, come from and go from. Um, when I got started on this thing, uh, I said, well, how did this all happen? Well, my grandmother uh, is buried at the Pine River Cemetery, died in, in delivering of a child. Can you imagine? Hey, life was very uh, brief. Brief, uh, your health was very brittle. You could be alive today, and a week from now you could be there were no hospitals. You had a doctor or someone. And they, they used the word practicing. They were, they were practicing. My grandfather uh, was chopping some kindling and he took the end of his thumb off. Got on the horse and he rode up to uh, Elgin. And uh, I don't remember the doctor's name there. But anyway, uh, the doctor said, Well, Ed, you did a nice job on that. <laughs> and so he uh, took and he pulled that, that artery out and put a knot in it. And then he took the flesh and he stretched it around. He sewed it all up. But now, before he did it, I have to tell you, they had a bottle of whiskey. They put his thumb in the whiskey, and they each took a, a shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But it was, it was the nicest job that, that you could ask for. But I, I have to tell you, because people did things you, you didn't know. One time, uh, a team of horses and a guy pulled up out front to talk to Grandpa. Grandpa was on there while they're talking. One dog, one horse dropped dead. Well, what do you do? You, you call a dump truck or something? No, you don't do that. So they took the harness off the, the dead one. They took the, the other horse and they hooked him up and they dragged him out in, into the woods. And they figured, hey, the, the coyotes and whatever else would get him. But that's how life went. And, and as a six-year-old kid, my dad said, I'll never forget that. Here's his dead one. We couldn't believe it. How often did that happen? Did that? Horses, horses. Hey, horses were very important. Horses' names. Now, I'm not going to read all these names off. You might have uh, but uh, Maud, Prince, King, Queen. Uh, uh, did I say Rex? Um, uh, well, Anna, Betsy, uh, Mac, Jack. And some of you can remember some horses' names. Anyone can help me on a name that you know? Tony. What? Tony. Tony, yeah, that's that a Mabel. What? Mabel. Mabel, that's a solid name. He probably named her after his wife. <laughs> Any other names? Daisy. Daisy, good name. Molly. Huh? Molly. Molly, you got them. Hey, those horses had names. Horses were pretty smart, too. Cows too. Horses are smarter than cows, in case you didn't know them. All right, well, listen. Hard to believe. Hard to <laughs> well, anyway, these are the things that went on, and, and, uh, and people uh, had to keep life pretty simple, and they did for the most part. Uh, and we, I got in there about, uh, well, I'll tell you the story. Ted Bistro. Ted, did I introduce you yet? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I met his cousin, Daryl, and I said, hey, I'm writing a book. He says, on what? He says, don't write another word. And do you talk to a guy named Floyd? What's Floyd's last name? Holland. 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 And yeah, I have to tell you about Floyd. Floyd was not a perfect man. Floyd was rough on the edges, smoked heavy, cool cigarette with his, his uh, cigarettes. He was a cool man. And uh, I used to say, no, 
uh, Floyd, 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 I said, you, you got to be nicer to people, you know. <laughs> I said, I, I wasn't used to, yeah, he'd just say things, he just come back. But he had information. Uh, Floyd took me for a walk around Omer and he says, no, this is where the uh, barbershop used to be. You know, and he'd say, now, over here, this is where the jewelry shop used to be. Now, you, if you've ever been to Omer, it's just a blink. But a beautiful blink. He says, okay, this is where, where uh, the uh, hotel was, the bar, you know. And then he had another bar over here. And uh, I'm walking around, and I said, it's coming to life to me, see. I, you, you just, you don't know this till you get into this stuff. And, uh, well, there were some other places there, too. And then we'd go over to Ma's, that was a restaurant. Good food, I think they're closed down now. Well, anyway, uh, you, you kind of get to know things. And so uh, when I got that information from Daryl, his cousin, he says, go over and see my cousin. And I went over to see... Uh, 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 Ted. Ted. Yeah, he did. Forgive me. You know, I tell you what happens is you get a little older, you, you, and you get into one of these things, you get going, you, you can't remember. But Ted, uh, Ted was a, a tremendous guy. And I got to back up a little bit to get to Ted, but uh, at one time, the Mighty Rifle River had a bend in it, and it went east, isn't that right? Yeah. Southeast. And they had the boom out at the end. Now, boom is where they had brought the logs and so forth. And, uh, uh, there was some discussion, people were upset, so a bunch of guys said, well, we'll change the course of the river. Now you think about it, how do you change the course of the river? It's all sand. They dug about a four foot width on this thing, and went down about three foot, and they moved on down south to, uh, is, is that uh, Huron River? Huron Bay. Yeah, okay. And uh, of course, somebody got wind of it, you, you can't be doing this thing. He had about 40, 50 guys that are digging up. And so they ran down to see Judge, uh, Judge, uh, oh, I, he's going to be mad at you. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll remember. He went down to see, we called him the hanging judge. And uh, they came in and, Judge, they're trying, they're trying to change the course of that river. So he says, well, leave them away. Let's get, get this thing set up. Boom! They dynamited the, the thing open, and then of course the water rushes in. He says, boys, it's just a little bit too late. <laughs> and that thing, by morning, they had a new river. Is that pretty close to it? Is that pretty close to it? Yeah. Yeah, they had a new river. And of course, this river angles, uh, dries up. I mean, I don't, they must have, uh, they must have filled it in or, or something, to, because they got that water to go down that drain. They didn't have to? No. Just went. It just went. Yeah. And so, if you're a canoe person, and you canoed there, you missed a, a beautiful section of uh, the Rifle River. And so, anyway, uh, you couldn't do that. You couldn't get away with that today, I don't think. No. But, uh, so anyway, I went over to see uh, Ted, and a nice guy, he, he may not believe this, but he's really a nice guy. <laughs> he, he, he took us in and he's got some log heads there where they had a, a, the log marks are on it. And I think you said I could have them, didn't you? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, I want to hold you to this, see? <laughs> and, uh, but he puts me on this four wheel dune buggy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hanging on. He goes, we go back to look at the old riverbed. I can hardly believe it. It's like stopping the time, turning the, everything back, and you can see this riverbed. Now there's some trees in there. And uh, it, the old bed, and it's dry, dried up, of course. And, you know, I've taken pictures, taken pictures. Uh, I'd like to go back and visit, but, you know, time runs out. Time runs out. You know, if you got a metal Some guys went up there with metal detectors in the end and do a little exploring. I feel what would guide their cars and they found chains and yeah. different things in the river there. Yeah. And again, how many people know about that? Just about zero. Ted would know because he lives right there. And so he took us over and I, I said it to him in under age, thanks very much. 
and I'll say it publicly. Thank you very much. And while we were at Ted's house, his mother came up, Arlene, a beautiful lady, 100 years old, pretty close. Yeah, she was. Yeah, 100 years old and polite uh, and, and everything you could ask for. And she sat and listened to us a while. And then it was her turn to talk. <laughs> and then it was her turn to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and she told us, scads, I'm writing this stuff down. I got it in the book, for the most part. And uh, she came to Bay City to a beauty school to become a beautician. Uh, you know, in, in life, women didn't get much credit. And it gave her an opportunity, and other people an opportunity, to, to get into a, a situation where they're earning their own money and then they can spend it. I, I, I also mentioned this to you. The ladies uh, around the lumbering camps, they had chickens and they had eggs and they had, uh, had chickens, of course, and different types of things, baked uh, bread and so forth. And they'd bring it out to the, well, somebody would bring it out, and they would get paid for this, and it created a, another level of, of an economy. And now they could buy that curtain or whatever, curtains or whatever they wanted, and so forth. I talked to another lady, her name was Jose, lived on Jose Road, can you believe that? Yeah, J-O-S-E, they say Jose, but it's Jose. That's how they pronounce their name. And then there's a uh, Robinson Settlement. Do you never hear that uh, out there, Ted? Robinson? Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, when I talked to uh, Alan, he says, well, I heard about it. I never knew it was. Well, jump in the car. We'll go out there. It's, it's just the, the Robinson family started the area, and they called it the Robinson Settlement. And that's where my my uh, family uh, were as far as the roof over their heads went. And, uh, uh, she, uh, her name was John Jones, and she married a guy named Johnson, and she lived over. Is there? A t is that a road called White Feather? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I went there, and she. I said, "Now you got to write me something down." She said, "Well, I will." I waited. I waited. I talked to her. You know, you don't get too pushy because if you do that, forget. <laughs> and so uh, she went to work, and she uh, put the thing, uh, what the Christmas trees were like. Uh, what it was like to uh, live in that time, no washing machines, no, dis uh, no uh, dishwashers. Uh, it was tough life. Uh, it was all work. I have to tell you, some worked harder than others. Uh, uh, my, mother, my mother had a ringer washing machine. You know what those are? Chum, 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 chum. And of course, we come down and we see that gear shift down there. And they, don't you touch that boy. And, but we had to empty out the, 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 they had two tubs for the dirty water and then the fresh water. You know, you rinse in one. And we had to take that and by the bucket upstairs, and, you know, know, six or seven steps and get up. And she'd say, Maiso, don't you spill one drop. <laughs> she knew if she cut us loose, we'd have that stairway full of water. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, that's what makes you makes you what you are. You, you have to do it. Should I tell them that story about my mother? Sure. <laughs> well, my mother was a, a spunky little gal. Loved her very much. Bossy as can be. She says, "You walk on these floors, yep. Well, then you're going to help well, wash. Oh. You sleep in that bed, you're going to help. You're going to make that bed. Ooh. And uh, they got the same thing. Clothes, you're going to help." And so we got used to the idea that you were part of the program and you were going to help, and that's how it goes. And so I'd give my mother a great big hug, and I'd say, Mom, thanks for all the whoppings you ever gave me. <laughs> and you know, if it hadn't been for you, I'd have been a bum. She'd cry. Oh, she'd cry. I'd say, Mom, don't cry, don't cry. And then I'd wait maybe another, uh, a little later, and I'd tell her, oh, don't, 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 don't do it, don't. Well, it was her, her thank you, and a thank you from us. It, it paid off. It just paid off. I'd have been a bum. You ever think about that? <laughs> you got married. That's where I saved your life. That's where I <laughs> he told me she, she was only 14 years old when they got married. Well, you thought it did. It seemed like it. All right. I'll, I'll back off a little bit. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, these are the things that were going on. And, and, and uh, Mrs. Johnst Johnston wrote scads of stuff. And I had to be careful because you can't put too much in a book or, you know, it's another book. By the way, if you ever had a desire to write a book, you can do it. You can do it. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have to be tough about it. 
and you're going to have to give up some time. In fact, uh, when I started to write this book, what did I know? Nothing. I said to Marjorie, what do you think? You know, oh yeah, go ahead. What did she know about it? <laughs> well, anyway, time, time. the back room, we had, you know, you, you, you get on this computer. I didn't know much about computers. And you put it on this uh, CD, because that's what's going to go with the printer. And they give you rough copies and so on. And so now I got all that and I put numbers down and I got all these pictures on the floor. Now, uh, <coughs> pictures, 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 pictures. Oh, yeah. Floyd Holland was exceptionally good about it. He, he could take them and put these things on the computer and fine tune them and they looked as good as you could ask for, you know. Uh, an angel on a word. To me, I, I owe him a lot. And uh, I said, well, don't, don't worry about it. No, no, you gotta do it right. I told you he was rough on the, uh, the corner. <laughs> and so, okay, here. And so uh, we had all these pictures and we laid them out all on the floor, all around the floor, all around the floor. And, and then we had to make it off limits. We couldn't have the kids run and run around and there could be come, uh, come move. There's no more in there. And, uh, and so we had some fun. We had some fun. Very much so, is that right, uh, Patrick? Very much so. Anyway, uh, trying to get down, I got some other good things to talk to you about, but you know, folks, what did people have to do years ago? They, they didn't have TVs, they didn't have all this stuff. That look, people walk along, they're walking along. <laughs> no, uh, well, whatever, telephone, telephone, cell phones, yeah. Well, anyway, they didn't have much to do. And in the lumbering camps, I have to tell you, there was a rough bunch of people. Now, the German people kind of went to the German camp because they spoke German and talked, uh, you know, music as well. And then the, uh, the uh, other people, the French, so. but the Irishmen, <coughs> they were an interesting group. They sang a lot, they probably drank a lot too, but <laughs> in our family, uh, we've had some drinking problems and I've always said, it's gotta be that Irish side. <laughs> Sadness. But uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the the camps were run this way, and they had their, they run them well because the camp superintendent was the final word, and it could be in a moment. If he says you're fired, you're fired. For example, the uh, bunkhouse. No, 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 no. no the uh, where, where did they feed them? What do they call that? Mess Mess hall. Mess hall. Huh? Chow hall. Whatever. You know what I'm talking. Well, the only time they got a chance to wash is right there, that time you go inside. You had to wash your hands. Folks, germs meant nothing to these people. In fact, I think that they probably scared some germ germs away. <laughs> <laughs> they had, generally they had two sets of long underwear. Now this is winter time. And they'd come in all sweaty and they'd get this shirt up the start, and they'd hang it on the nail and they'd grab the other one, they'd put it on. Now, they never got washed. They just <laughs> let it dry out, and they smelled to high heaven. When they got up, you know, you heard about you, know, you get to an area and you, hey, we, the, the lumbermen are here. Don't they? <laughs> the Sawyers are here. Well, anyway, these were some of the things: bed bugs, wow, fleas. What else? What else? Who is? Lice. lice. Oh yeah, body lice. And you know, they got used to it. But there weren't any sprays or anything like that. No showers. And uh, they, they stunk to high heaven. Uh, the horses had a, in fact, they kept the horses in a different barn and, and the, and the uh, uh, guys who, and by the way, people owned their own horses. You just didn't get a pair of horses because you take care of your horses. You put you either properly fed and so on. And they slept in the same area with, with the horses. But uh, <clears throat> the, uh, they, they, were, they smelled less than what the other <laughs> When my grandfather came home, see, come, they have to come home eventually. Uh, they were cutting, they were cutting uh, uh, pine, softwoods, softwoods. They floated. You know, you, maybe you never thought of this. They, they'd cut that pine off and when they got in the water, they would float. You take a piece of, of uh, hickory or walnut, you throw it there, and bloop, and then one end goes down, and, and you, 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 you just can't get, the, you can't control the same way. And it wasn't until the big wheel, and it wasn't until the rare woods came that they, would, they took the hardwoods off. And so, anyway, uh, the uh, soft the softwoods, and there was plenty of pines. You know, and folks, I can't even I, I don't want to even get into it. But there are a lot of crooks in this world. There were then too. 
and uh, you had you had your your perimeter, and people are going outside the perimeter, and they're taking logs down and bringing them in, and uh, and so on. Well, once they did that, and then of course they took them to down to what they call a high bank alongside the river. Winter would come, ice would get so so, and then they would take and they'd cut these logs out, they'd get them out on the ice. They could control it. And then as soon as the ice began to break up, now remember, the, the rivers, they were all controlled by gravity, or, or high water, low water. And they had the dams up there, and then they had runners. And uh, they would take, uh, and, uh, when the, the word was, hey, we're all ready, they'd run and then run, and they, they had clocks and uh, watches and so forth. No radios, and then they'd say, let her flow. And so they might lift off two boards, maybe one board, maybe six inches. That water would start to move. Maybe within about 20 minutes it began to move. Ships ahoy. And they started moving. And they crossed the lumber. Now, I gotta tell you, you want to get somebody mad in the old days, you, you, you call you call them the right thing. They were called river jacks, like lumber jacks. They call them river river rats. And that's that's worth the fight. That's worth the fight. And uh, they get those logs going and uh, and let's say it started to rain. Well, the thing is going too fast. So these guys are running and they'll shut her down, you know. Just get that, those logs because the logs would blow the dam right up. And, uh, and then after they got those logs down to where they wanted them and, and uh, into the rifle river out to the boom, <coughs> they would take and they'd open the fresheners. They'd lift the boards on the fresheners and then water would run in and raise the level of the, of the main river. They shut those down. And they didn't waste any water. And then, of course, they send out another load. Uh, a log, a log ride uh, is unforgiving. If you slip off and fall in that water, chances are you're not going to get out alive because those boards logs are bumping into each other. And uh, unless you can swim over to the side or something, like that, yeah. and so you had to be very, very careful. They had a cork booth with had little little uh, spikes, uh, something like that. And uh, so they could get a good a good grip on this thing. But they'd move them down. And only a few guys could do that. Not everybody was nimble and, and, and so on. But you had to know what you're doing. And you want to turn the log over? Whoop! Can you see that? Yeah. Whoops. Can't open it. Can't open it, yeah. All right. And uh, then you have other things where you take, you could push a log, pull a log, that sort of thing. Can you see that? Okay. They carried those in their hand. Pardon? They carried those in their hand on top of logs. Yeah, some did. Yeah, that, but that was their job. They didn't do anything. They, they, all of them had different types of jobs. And they pushed that log over and pulled it over, and uh, and then balance. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, you hear crazy stories. My, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. My grandfather, every camp, they had a, a round robin. They'd, they'd find out who the tough guy in town was in the camp. And uh, so, uh, when you had the, the, the tough guy, then they would challenge another camp and another camp. and. Uh, Sometimes they would make it formal, and they they work six days a week, so any activities are going to be on a Sunday. Uh, they'd have fights between these guys, and then they would declare them more champions. And so on. My grandfather, I guess you'd say he liked to fight. <laughs> he liked to fight, and uh, there was he was sitting on the log on a Sunday morning, putting his boots on, and this group of guys, about twenty or thirty guys pulling up and uh, so Grant looked and he says hey what, what's this he, I don't know these guys and this guy says where's that SOB but you know what he said <laughs> by the name of so and so and so and so and Grandpa says well he says well you're about as close as you're going to get to him well by that time there's 50 60 people 70 people all wrong because they knew that there was going to be some action well this, this guy was called the Alpina Pig. The Alpina Pig. Okay, if you're from Elma, uh, uh, uh. okay. 
Uh, Alpina, if you're from Alpena, okay, I'll, forgive me. But anyway, the Alpena pig was tough. And he come right after the old man. And the old man took and he hit him with a left and he stepped to one side and, and, and there was a pause. And Grandpa says, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. And so anyway, he'd come at him again. He'd give him a left. Give him a left. Step around. And he put him down. Hit him inside the side head. Put him down. And then, then what do you do? You come over and say, how oh, you doing, buddy? <laughs> no, sir. They put the boots to him. You know what that means? They kick him. Left, right, left, right. And you had to, you know, they'd roll. They'd, they'd, they'd squeal and, and roll and jump up, and then they're at it again. And so anyway, uh, he had uh, abused the, the, the pig, and the guy said, hey, back off, Ed, back off. You're going to kill him. Okay, okay. Well, then George Mahoney looks at my grandpa. He says, by God, Eddie said he bit your ear off. What? <laughs> sure enough. They cooked the butter, right? Right on down. And he's, well, well, hey, and this guy comes over with a plug of tobacco, puts the tobacco in, oh. and then killing any germs you got there. Yeah. <laughs> he took a bandana around and they tied it on his head. And uh, hey, George, George Mahoney says, hey, Ed, you know what you just whipped? He says, no. He says, you just whipped the Alpina pig. He says, what? He said, I never knew that. And so anyway, uh, Grandpa jumped up on the log. And, hey, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Because you know, the crowd was beginning to break up. Hold it, guys. He says, remember this. It's better to lose your ear than to lose a fight. <laughs> hey, that's the way it was. And so my grandfather always had this bite out of his ear. And George Mahoney was the guy that stood with him. He stood, I could go on and on. Uh, they were friends. Very much so they were friends. You got that again, very much so. You'll be using that before long. <laughs> very much so. Well, anyway. Uh, a lot of fun that took place. Um, Grandpa, I, I would say my grandpa, nice guy, but he, he drank too much like a lot, most of those guys did. Goes into the bar and uh, a stranger walks in and he announces, he says, I can whip anybody in the house. And the guys are saying, wow. They all begin to look over to Ed. He looked over and he walked over and he says, he says, hey, you think you can whip me? Hmm? And the old man says, yeah, I can whip you. White star. He grabbed my my father, my grandpa, and he picked him up. And he's and the guy says, "Ed, your feet almost hit the ceiling." <laughs> when his feet hit, when his feet got back on the ground, uh, there was some action. Well, this thing went on, and you usually you knock him down, you, you put the boots to him. Ed, stop, stop. The guy gets up. He says, "We're going to finish this tomorrow." <laughs> he says, uh, "Go out the barn." And my grandpa thought, you know. This is the back of the other. Maybe he's got a gun. He said, ah, he said, I'll meet you right here in the bar. You know, you know, monkey, but right here, we'll finish this up. All right, I'll be here. I don't know what they said at the time. So, <laughs> anyway, got back and they said, Ed, we went up to get him, get him up this morning. You know what? He was dead. <laughs> yeah, you could go to jail nowadays for that, couldn't you? Yeah. But they, that's, that's the way it went. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> I said, Dad, what was his name? He said, we don't know what his name is. They buried him right there at Homer. They got no stone on him and so on. And, uh, yeah, and nobody knew, uh, ever wrote and asked if they saw this guy going through town. And uh, I don't know. They didn't have social security cards back in there or something. <laughs> but that's how it went, folks. Never a dull moment. Uh, I wanted to tell you something else about the Mighty Rifle River. The Mighty Rifle River now is a kind of a canoer's paradise, fishing paradise, I guess. I don't know. They have a sucker uh, season, and people come from all over. Oh, I know what I want to tell you. Omer was, was the county seat for Aranette County, because they had a good sized town there. And, uh, and I'll tell you this they had three things happen to. to First, they had a they, they, they had a, a, the dam, the water backed up and come over the top, and it washed Homer almost off the map, um, houses and so forth. But the people came back; they were tough. And then later on, they had a fire. Well, they were tough with a fire because you know, the fire is done. It's, it's done. But anyway, it burnt that town. In fact, they had wooden sidewalks, and it burnt the wooden sidewalks. 
those people in Homer didn't give up. They came back and they kept working on it. Finally, they had a tornado. And the tornado ripped the, the place out. But some of those things have contributed to the growth of, of uh, Homer. The uh, Homer had a, a brick, brick factory. Anybody, did, did, did any of you know that? Had a brick factory? Yeah. I got some bricks that uh, I picked up and uh, I think hey, I'm kind of a select few. Ted, you got any of those bricks, have you? No, I don't. Maybe I should tell you where you get them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like that blacksmith shop right there and uh, it's right, it's right near the, uh, the uh, courthouse. I got something to tell you. Uh, courthouse. <laughs> and if, uh, if you could get permission from the folks and a metal detector, you probably would find a whole bunch of stuff because Axe heads, they, they, they throw them over there and when, when we get to them, we get to them. Maybe they never got to them. So when the place shut down, the stuff was there. Um, yeah, the, uh, I'm trying to make sure I don't miss this one. Uh, Omer, Omer, Omer. I'll keep going. But uh, th these, these are some of the things that went on there. Now, can you imagine Omer having a jewelry shop? You know, they, they didn't sell Timex watches or anything there, but <laughs> they fixed watches and there's that kind of stuff, diamonds and so on. But, uh, Charlie Joes, uh, I'll throw this name out to him, it's one of my dad's friends. We got an old barbering ch chair from, from Charlie. When the barber shop went down, he went over and got it. He slept in this thing. He, he slept in a, he slept in a, a, a basically a one room cabin. And uh, it was talking to the rules that there, no, it's not right. And there was mortar, whatever. And uh, Charlie slept in that, in that, uh, Barber chair. And when Charlie passed away, I went over and, and I collected a few things and I said, well, I, and we have that at the uh, museum now. I'm pretty sure we do. Courthouse. Courthouse. Courthouse, what did I say? <laughs> yeah. And um, so some of this stuff lives on. Uh, we, we know that. By the way, how much time have I got left? Just keep going. Half hour? Yep. Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, um, these are some things that you, you find out about, you recognize something about. But the fun part was that when Homer lost his population, if I'm saying this right, you correct me if you want to, uh, Standish was bigger, so they became the county seat. And then the word went out, well, the eagle flies over Standish, and the crow flies over did you ever hear that before? <laughs> you heard it before, didn't you? <coughs> oh, yeah. Well, that was an insult. You might as well bite my nose off. <laughs> hey, you know, I figured out when my grandpa got his, his ear bit off, I figured that, that bugger, Tyson got my book and read it. You know, Tyson, <laughs> he's always trying to bite people's ears off. Well, get back to this. Huh? Anyway, uh, Homer's pretty smart. They have the, like, the sucker contest or they'd have other like the fourth of july they would make a big day out of it kind of a lumberman's deal and they'd have like a fight that would go on and they would have the, the throwing the, the axe heads at the, or the axe at the, at the, the logs and, and so forth or they'd have a log uh, marathon you know you know i'll take on anybody here we'll get on this log and we'll see how long you could stay you know and some guys are pretty good at it They'd spin that one way, then they'd spin it back the other way, tip it around, and, and so forth. And so they would bring in all those people from Standish who spent their money in Omer. Pretty smart. They <laughs> <laughs> made bread and pies, and, and uh, they knew how to do it. They know how to do it. But folks, uh, that mighty rifle river, all I can tell you is that my, my dad told me, I'll tell you the rest of this one, my dad told me, he said, uh, Gramp, or Pa, Pa and I used to go up every every uh, uh, Memorial Day. Is that what they call it nowadays? They call it Memorial Day years ago, didn't they? Oh, decoration. Decoration. decoration day? All right, Decoration Day. We'd go up there, but he went up there with uh, with Grandpa. And uh, he always very faithful to come. He never remarried. Never remarried. 
that's how you say that for him, but he, uh, they, they go to the cemetery, they put their geraniums on it, they have just a little prayer and some sadness, and then he says, let's, let's go up to, to him. So my, my dad had a 1929 Model A. Sound familiar? Anybody ever ride a Model A here? No one has ridden a Model A in here? You, you got one? No, my cousin. Well, Model A, Ford. We had one. Yeah. Well, most of you know that everybody had to have a Model A at one time. But anyway, they drove uh, east on uh, uh, Pine River uh, Road there, so they got the state, is that right? Uh, and they turned uh, north, and they headed down the road, and when my grandpa could see that we were coming up the river, he'd say, boy, boy, that's how they talked, pa, boy, you know, they, you know, they couldn't always remember all the kids' names. <laughs> <laughs> he'd say, stop, stop here, I, I, I want to get out. So my dad stopped, old grandpa got out, he walked down carefully, Got down to that water, got down on one knee, ran his water, hand through that water, splash, 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 splashed it in his face. <laughs> he came back to the car and he said, son, I just saw it all. He said, I can remember when I was going on this, on, right here, on this uh, walk drive. He says, I remember guys yelling out, hey, get that loose one over there. And he said, and all these people would come from all over to see this log drive. It was a big thing. It was better than watching a train, I guess. They didn't have trains to speak of. But the one trains came and changed a lot of things. So anyway, uh, he, splashed, he splashed that water up and he said, I said, I just saw it all. I just saw it all. I, I could hear it, you know. And, and he had this water on his face. See, you, you almost have to understand a little bit about this. Because some people say, is that guy crazy? Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, no. His memory had, had taken him back. And he said, yeah, I saw it all. And uh, he uh, told about the good times and the good days. You know, sometimes if a, 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 a lumber or a river jack or a log drive, if he uh, if he fell off and got killed or they put a tree dropped on, the, 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 uh, the uh, lumber company would take, took no credit for it. No, no credit. You're, it was one of those deals that you're on your own. But, they would deliver the body to the home or to the gravesite. They would uh, uh, bring uh, uh, some food and so forth for the family. <coughs> and then for one year, and maybe longer, it depends if they had a large family, they would provide staples. They'd go to a, a, a grocery store of some kind and say, hey, I want a bag of potatoes out there once a week or what, whatever it was, you know, maybe you didn't, didn't eat that many potatoes and so forth. And so that they took care of them, but I mean, it was hard times. Uh, people say, well, I fall down, I'm gonna, uh, I get hurt in the job. Uh, this, this is gonna be easy picking. No, 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 no. But uh, that was part of it. Now, get back to the uh, mess hall. That was it, the mess hall. When they came in, they washed their hands. Remember I told you that? When you walked in that door, you shut your mouth. Not one word out of you because the superintendent would fire you on the spot, just walking around. Because they knew if you could talk, you could what? Argue. And if you could argue, you could fight. And so they break up the, the mess hall and the food's all over and, and you know what? It's time to go to work. These guys can't work. So there was no talking. And they tell us no talking. That sign of no talking. They were serious about it. Okay. And uh, if you got there, uh, well, they had to be out in the woods uh, at daybreak. So it means that you were up. And, and, but they had uh, flapjacks. You ever hear flapjacks? <coughs> Pancakes, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, they had bacon. They had eggs. They had uh, bacon and eggs. They had potatoes. The, 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 the things that could stick to your ribs, you know? And you, you, you can't run it. You can't run it. And lo and behold, uh, they called when it was good all the coffee they wanted to drink. They called it a morning glory. You ever hear that before? Well, you're learning a lot today. It was a morning glory. It was a morning glory. And if they complained, if they complained, that could be pretty serious stuff. And then the guys used to stuff a lot of stuff in their pockets, like they do when you're in the army or something. You have to have a little extra on the road. 
And then if you'd be out there, they'd take you out there with horse and whatever they had, uh, the, dra the uh, sleds, or take them out there to drop them off. And then they, they, whoever was in charge, you get this one, you get this one. And then they had, they had that organized. And uh, you, you had to have a tree down. You couldn't fit around all day to a tree down. You're, you're on the road. But uh, come noon, here comes the, uh, the sled. It looks like a little delivery truck. Here comes the sled. Ooh, they lift up the sides. They got metal plates. And they have thick soup, something to stick to your ribs. Lots of bread. Uh, uh, what did I say? Bread. Uh, well, it's soup. Potato soup. <laughs> Chili, I guess. And uh, those guys would fill up, and then they were ready to go to work again. And they didn't get fed until they got back. And so when it was time to come back, and they came back with a wagon, or, or whatever, what, in the wintertime they didn't have a wagon, they have sleds. Uh, they pick them up and bring them all back in. That's how it goes. You know, a lot of lumberjacks didn't shave. You didn't have any electric shavers, you know. You know, straight razors. Oh, folks, none of us in here used a straight razor, right? Anybody strong enough to say, yeah, I used to. Your dad did, though, didn't he? My dad had that real strap. Yeah, you were told to leave that alone. Because you know what that strap was also good for? Yeah. <laughs> whip your butt. That's what it was. And I'll tell you, there's two two straps on the first one it hit, and then the second one come right behind it. <coughs> you got a good move. Well, anyway, the barber shops. Uh, the guy, it was just a just a wonderful thing to go to a barber shop and to trust them. They weren't going to cut your throat. And clean you all up. Put the old uh, smelly stuff on. Okay. But uh, see, if, if you've never experienced anything, it's hard to understand what I'm talking about. Some of you know, some of you know it. It's big time stuff. And so anyway, uh, three years later. Oh, by the way, by the way, yes, I, you know, I want to encourage you to go around. We be careful. You got to write it so it isn't about you know your your cousin or somebody unless he's famous. Uh, because you got to have a market out there. And uh, these books here, can you see them from there? Mm -hmm. These books here are, uh, they just didn't happen, you know. I, uh, I told you, I, we typed them up on the, on the uh, uh, CDs, and then they'd take them and they'd put them on their machines and they'd print them off for you. And uh, uh, you got three runs for the same price. And they'd give it back to you, you know, a rough draft. You take and you, you change the stuff that you needed to. And, forth. and then sometimes you come back and you'd say, hey, I, I'm sure they missed it. And so when you buy a book, sometimes you'll find some errors in it. Don't worry about it. You're not charging anything extra. For it. <laughs> I, bought a, I bought a publication from the Saginaw News. And I thought, well, I'll sit back. I found pages upside down in the thing. Come on. Pages are upside down. Uh, finally, you go to the final. Uh, finally, you go to the final draft, and you say, "Okay, you sign off." On it. Now, by the way, this is made in America. You know what Montmorency is? Montmorency, the press up there. Nice guys. Nice guys. Some books you'll read that says um, put together in Korea or someplace, but mine says printed in the United States. Pretty good. Huh? So you, you're getting your money's worth. Oh, Oh, um, the I I had a, an experience. Um, you know, people don't always know about this either. But they, they the trains when they got those in, they'd run them across a lake sometimes because it was a shortcut. Now you know, water gets pretty. They it would hold them, except that you had to be sure you didn't go over. You know, when the ice was not strong anymore. And from time to time, they lose a train. Bradford Lake, ever hear of it? No. Up by Gaylor? Well, no one would have believed it, but one of one of our contact people said, yeah, there's, a, there's an engine and a load of logs back, uh, at the bottom of that lake. Well, hey, 
you just aren't going to go out and going to go swimming down like something like that. So they got a hard uh, hard hat, hard hat, hard hat. <laughs> so they call them hard hard hat. And took them down. They had lights. Hey, come back. No, this don't tell them. Come back. Hey, there's a whole train down there. Now you just can't, you just can't go down and start scattering stuff off the train. I mean that's against the law. But you can take pictures. And they had one one uh, car load. They dumped, it was dumped over. Well, a little different story there. So they backed in this boom, Martin uh, Martin uh, trucking and somewhere. They backed into the boom and the hard hat took it down, wrapped up the log, yanked on it, and they pulled it up. Well, those old booms, remember the old boom? <laughs> Nowadays, <laughs> well, the people said, hey, what's going on? And so guess who they called? Who takes care of the uh, rivers and lakes and DNR. DNR, you yeah. know. And they come over and they say, yeah, you guys are out of business. Right now. Get your junk and get it out of here. Well, we knew it was for sure because we, we took, oh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 logs out of there. We knew it was for sure. We knew the location. And we kind of put it to bed. You know, they forget. I talked to some people up at Grayling and I said this and I said that they were divers and I said you ought to go up there and take pictures of that for educational purposes to show to people the bell was still on the train and so forth um, and uh, it was about 40 foot of water, there's pretty, pretty deep water in there, you just don't swim down there, you know, maybe 30 feet of water. Can you hear me back there? Yeah. Anyway. Um, I talked to me, oh, he said, there's nothing over there. He said, that, that was over on this side. We've been looking for it. He said, we don't found it yet. I said, well, it's over here. No, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I says, okay, buddy. Okay. It's still there. I'm not worried about it. It's still there. And someday someone's going to uh, yeah. put their Scooby-Doo's on and put down and take, <laughs> take the pictures out. Yeah. Um, and I, I said, I don't even want any... Uh, uh, any uh, acknowledgments that I, I led you guys to this? Um, could it be one of them? Yeah, Bradford Lake. Um, I was going to say I found out. Yeah, the lost. We found out about a, a murder and, and so forth. That's it. Now, I'm not going to tell you. You want to read it? You, you want to read it? <laughs> See, yes. John, in 1964, when you inter interviewed my grandpa, how long did you know him before 64? Oh, I knew him a long time. His grandfather, George Mahoney. I knew him a long time, but my dad had died, and uh, I said, boy, George Mahoney could talk. You know, I remember they could talk? Yeah. Very much so. That was very much so. Well, you remember this? Yeah, very much so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I said, I gotta get up there, and I gotta get a uh, a recording of this or I'm going to lose it. You can't remember one. So I go up and uh, invites me in and so we good time and so on. And so I said now it's time for business George. And so I turned that thing in and you guys didn't know about it for years later because I didn't I didn't know how golf was named. John, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was sober, so you can't. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't consume the alcohol. Uh, but anyway, uh, he, 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 we recorded, we recorded. It was, this was a big reel-to-reel. Uh, uh, -reel. That's long ago. And then after that, they came with the cassettes. And then after the cassettes, they went to CDs. Uh, We've, had ta we've even taken those reel-to-reels and then in the house, we, we, uh, take and put them on a CD, and you lose something every time. And then from there we put it on a CD, and uh, it's much easier to store. And the tape stretches, you understand? Uh, I've got some tapes, I, what was that? Just, we back it up and you, you, you just can't get it. It just, it just stretches it and the sound stretches with it. Oh, there's probably some way to do it. But uh, anyway, I went up and I, I recorded uh, with uh, George Mahoney, nice guy. And he says, I don't hurt any place. Well, he, he must have been in his 90s by then. 80s. 80s? 
I don't hurt any place. He says, I'm just tired. Sound familiar? He didn't have any arthritis or any of those things, but he said, I'm just tired. And that's what happens. When I, uh, when I was uh, 60, I could jump over fences, you know? <laughs> Nothing to this. I hit 70, and I said, where's the gate? <laughs> <laughs> when I hit 80, I went to bed one night, and I woke up an old man. <laughs> hey, you know, you got to have some humor. You got a little humor, things will go a lot better. I mean, you got to see the lighter side of it. And uh, if you want to torment somebody, go ahead. I mean, no, no. <laughs> what comes around, what goes around, comes around. That's right. But uh, these are the things that were happening. And I got, I got that information from George. And, and uh, it was a storehouse full of stuff. Storehouse. He'd tell about this case. Uh, I, I told you about the guy who got his ear bit away. Grandpa got his ear bit off. But he told other things that happened. Other things that happened. And, and he named people I'd never heard before. And I wrote them all down. I wrote them all down. I got it, I think, up at the, uh, at the museum in... Uh, no, Sorry. no. Sorry. All right. East Coast. Standing. <laughs> well, anyway, I wrote, I got a, a map down there we made uh, on the stairway. And then I got a list of all these names that the people that, that were around at that time. And you'd say, so what? Am I putting anybody to sleep yet? No. <laughs> I gotta jump up on this table. <laughs> uh, drinks around the house. <laughs> there is some of these stories. Uh, the Maury's Bar, and that is in, in Homer. And uh, there's been a big argument about some stuff. And, and uh, anyway, some guy told my grandpa that Lamori had hired uh, uh, a guy to come up to with him. And of course, that's like saying sick him, isn't it? I'll be right over. There. So anyway, Grandpa came up. You know, you hear these stories. George, George told us. Comes up, bam! Yeah, they got these swinging doors. Knocked that door right off. Walked in. And he says, "Where's that so and so?" It says he's going to whip me. And the guy come running right at him, and he ran right by him. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? You know, I don't want to fight you. <laughs> Anyway, you know, that story is forgotten, no one knows. And you get into this other stuff here, I, I laugh because, uh, uh, oh yeah, 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 uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you his name right here. Uh, yeah, here it is. Bill Donnelly. You remember Bill Donnelly? Yeah, you remember. <coughs> Bill Donnelly had, he was a teacher, I think, at one time. Yes. And he would, he did all kinds of things, he was a roofer. Anyway, he had a basement full of stuff. I, I, folks, I can't tell you. I think I got a few things, and this is just peanuts here. Uh, I think I got a few things, and I have to be careful because Margaret owns some of the space in that place. <laughs> and, uh, hey guys, keep that in mind. Uh, you'll never think like a woman, you know. <laughs> but you better be prepared to, 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 to understand what they're thinking when you come time. Uh, Mark and I have been married 61 years. I have never put a hard hand on that woman. I have never put a hard hand on her. I, I thought about it. <laughs> well, anyway, um, this this thing uh, keeps coming around. Keeps coming around. I got my brother-in-law in here. He was a, a cruiser and a scaler. You know a cruiser and a scaler? They go to the woods, they're cruising. They come to a tree. Uh, I like that tree. They put a paint spot on it. And then he puts his scaler on it and he tells you how much, how many board feet are in that thing. <laughs> then he'd go, to all, he, you know, somebody'd say they want to sell the trees. He'd go in and he'd come back and he'd call his boss. He'd say, boss, I've got some nice lumber out here and so forth. And this is what we figured. And this is about what it's worth. The boss says, Bill, if they agree, Write them a check. Now they had this agreement that they wouldn't drive the trucks over the grass and they wouldn't leave a mess out there. They had to pick up the stuff. And when, of course they got a walnut tree, they picked up everything. You understand? Even little pieces of wood because they make uh, knives and stuff out of them. 
And so uh, uh, Bill's story's in here, and uh, I, I kind of chuckle at it, you know, I'm trying to keep it in the family. But uh, the rest of it, uh, drinks around the house, I told you about that, I told you about Grace, I told you about uh, oh, uh, Horatio Davis. Anybody know Horatio? Yes. I see him the other day. He's not back from Alaska yet. Yeah, he's back. Hey, Horatio, uh, Horatio took me for a walk. I thought I was in condition because Horatio, uh, Horatio, I don't know what condition he's in now, but he's a pretty, he could walk. And uh, I had a good workout by the time I got back. And so I saw a lot of firsthand stuff back there, but Horatio uh, was good to me. Horatio was uh, an old timer. He was a military man one time. Oh, I wanted to talk to you about the big wheel. Can you see it all back there, the big wheel? Yeah, it was developed and invented in, in uh, uh, the name of that town, got it right here. Oh yeah, Manistee. Yeah, and they got them, they got some out there. And I went over, I took some pictures of them. And they, great big wheels, big wheels, okay? Two big wheels, and they had a tongue on it, and they would take and pull over the top of a log, and then they'd take a chain, and they'd put around that chain, bring it up, and they take the, the tongue, bring the tongue over because they got to put horses on it. And they would raise that up maybe five inches. Didn't have to be very high. And then the horses will pull that log from this spot to that spot. Folks, it's not easy to move a log. If you had a log out in your yard or something and you wanted to move it, it's not so good. Not so good. Um, it's amazing that what else they had. They, they, they came through in good shape. Uh, morning glory. What's a morning glory? Breakfast. Breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the bunk houses, they were full of bugs. In the mess hall, you kept your mouth shut. And uh, by the way, there usually was more people for the job uh, than the that applicant. Can you hear it? More people wanted to work. And so the old guys, they'd say, how old are you? And of course, they'd fudge, wouldn't they? You know, I want to be younger. You know, they're good guys, but then, and then the, the younger guys, how old are you? And then they would roll the numbers the other way, didn't they? <laughs> now, when did they get paid? They got paid at the end of the season. Because if they paid during the season, what would a guy might do? He would put wings on his feet and take off. Now, they didn't pay you normally in cash. And by the way, paper money was not good money because it would be sweaty and everything. And so they paid off usually in silver dollars. You made about a dollar a day. Now, sometimes you made less than that. About 30 bucks a month on feed and uh, nice to sleep. But uh, they treated you pretty fair, you know. They had a, they had a company store, with no money. When did you say, yeah, I need an ax or I need something, you got to find you put your name on it, and then they would deduct that from your pay. Now, some guy said, hey, those cooks, they deducted a lot from me. Well, memories are a short thing. Uh, and I, I, I don't. But that's how they ran it. And they, they had it well organized, well organized every time. Were you going to say that? All right, now, I, I, I think I've gone over time. I think I've yeah. All right, now, see, if I said you had any questions, but this thing is going to go on, and those people are going to shoot me. <laughs> I just want to tell you, my husband was born in Omer. Where? Omer. Is that right? Well, 40. stand up. We'll give you a round of applause. <laughs> Well, the, the doctor lived there in a little house. In oh, yeah. Dr. Staley? Dr. Staley? I was wondering. Well, I can tell you, most babies will have them. Another one. Do you go up there to go sales? Well, listen, folks, you've been very good. Nobody has a short job. We like to go. I'm going to tell you about the book. You can't leave until you just see the 
your bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 20 bucks. He used to be more. <laughs> Did you guys say, wow, that's a good price? Is he funny back to you? Oh, yeah. he was this a is a Hillary uh, book. Book. <laughs> well, and, his uh, mother was a there's lord. There's so many things. I got pictures of him. And he's a Van Dusen. Van Dusen. A Van Dusen. That's the story. And if you want to buy a book, go see this lady yeah. over here. This is uncle. Pay her to give the book. And then I'll be down here and I'll sign yeah. it for you. No extra charge. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Hey, good crowd. Perfect. Thank you very much.